Next slide. Yep. Our, our, our next speaker is um, Pai Vital, who is a, a graduate from UPLB, this bio, uh, UP Right now, disconnect po ata si uh, Lawrence, so I'll uh, take over. Uh, our fourth speaker this morning is uh, Dr. Pirangeli Vital of the uh, Natural Sciences Research Institute of uh, UP Diliman. He finished his uh, BS Bio from UPLB, MS in Microbiology from UPD, and also a PhD in Biology. He was a former faculty also at the Institute of Biology at the College of Science. Um, and uh, she currently heads the Biological Research and Services Laboratory of NSRI. He is uh, the youngest diplomat from the Philippine Academy of Microbiology and her research interests are into environmental microbiology and microbial food safety. So to give us a talk on applications of molecular biology and biotechnology and food safety, challenges, opportunities, and apl applicability. I would like to welcome Dr. Pai Vital. Hi, Sir Jerovi. Thank you so much. Great. So again, thank you very much for joining me to be part of this um, session. Um, I believe I have a um, different field from the rest or so far from the other speakers. But anyway, I will try to connect this with the others and to relate also with agriculture as well as food safety. So good morning, everyone. Good morning to those who are logged in in Zoom, as well as those who are watching in YouTube. Special thanks and good morning to my researchers are also watching who helped me cram this PowerPoint presentation. So as Sergio already mentioned, the title of my talk, the objective is to provide you um, with a brief background of the use of molecular biology and biotechnology on the application of food safety. So as part also of my bi-weekly report, I just would like to mention that I am also an ASEAN Science and Technology Fellow for 2019-2020 under the ASEAN Foundation and the USP. There, I have already satisfied my progress for this week. All right, so what would be the outline of my talk? So my talk would be, uh, I would be giving a very brief introduction. And then um, just to satisfy, of course, uh, um, my title, I would be giving the challenges, opportunities, and applicability of biotechnology and molecular geology. But I would like to focus and share with you one of my research studies, which is on the development of um, LAMP LFA or the loop amplification, um, with, which, will I, uh, which I will be sharing in a while. So before I begin, for those of you, um, I noticed that um, I am the first biologist after the chem and speakers. So before I begin, I would like to differentiate first um, biotechnology with that of molecular biology. So we often um, use these terms interchangeably, but in fact, of course, they are interrelated. But molecular biology, it is a defined as a branch of biology that concerns the molecular basis of the different biological activities. As we have heard earlier, there are different activities and applications that are being done by our speakers. And these biological activities are between biomolecules in various systems of a cell, including the interactions between the DNA, RNA proteins, and others. While on the other hand, biotechnology is the use of biological processes for industrial and other purposes, in short, having application or the use of uh, molecular biology techniques to produce particularly products such as the products that were already discussed earlier by our speakers. So the most common um, examples of biotechnology would be uh, the genetic manipulation of microorganisms, which we use now, such as the production of antibiotics and hormones, of course, in order to improve lives. And for my talk, improving lives is in terms of food safety, which is part of uh, or which is one of uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. 
All right. So um, as a basic concept in molecular biology, I would just would like to introduce the organisms that are involved or being manipulated in um, Mal bio and biotech. Actually, in English, we call it manipulate, but we just like use or utilize these um, organisms in order for us, of course, to um, affect or impact our lives. So as a microbiologist, I am a bit biased in using this system of classification as I use the three domains of life, when it represents most of the microorganisms, as you can see in your screen, that should be bacteria and archaea, which are microorganisms, and part of the eukarya, which is us, but mostly, of course, microorganisms, which are proteins, such as protozoa and algae, fungi, as well as plants, and as I have mentioned, also animals. So we utilize all these um, organisms for um, biotechnology and molecular biology techniques. So in terms of these microorganisms, which would be the core theme of uh, molecular biology, or the, the, the central theme would lie, of course, in the DNA or the deoxyribonucleic acid. I think we are familiar with this now as we are in, uh, uh, in the pandemic and we are using this molecular technique to detect um, the virus. So DNA is a polynucleotide form from covalently linked deoxyribonucleotide units. And of course, it stores hereditary information within a cell and carries this information from generation to generation. So all of the organisms that I have mentioned earlier possess this DNA. On the other hand, um, for viruses, if you are just curious, they are not part of the hierarchy or the system of classification because we uh, do not yet classify them there, but they possess um, DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. So the central theme of MBB or molecular biology would lie, of course, in the central dogma. In understanding this, we understand the mechanism that we can use for the molecular biology techniques in order for us to use biotechnology to produce the products. So from the DNA that I have um, defined earlier, it would undergo replication, or in, in Filipino, pinapadami natin yung copies of this DNA. It could undergo transcription to form into RNA. And similarly, like in English, we translate into Filipino. So in order for us to understand RNA, should be translated into amino acid or protein. Again, for some organisms, um, which we do not classify again in the hierarchy or the system of classification, such as the viruses, they're capable of this one, the red line with an asterisk, which is reverse transcription. And so what is now the relationship of food safety with the MDD? So one of the applications um, or one of the impacts that you can use uh, the techniques of molecular biology is the field or the broad field of food safety. And in relation to that, our first speaker, I think, um, already discussed the broad field also of agriculture. So I think these are all um, interconnected. So I just would like to define what um, food safety is as a brief introduction. So this refers to the assurance that food will not cause harm to the consumer when it is prepared or eaten according to intent to its intended use. Of course, in the Philippines, um, we are protected by this law, which is the Food Safety Act. However, um, the Food Safety Act, uh, to define first, the Food Safety Act is a, um, an act to strengthen the food safety regulatory system in the country to protect consumer health and facilitate market access of local foods and food products, as well as all other purposes. So the main objectives would be public protection from food and waterborne illnesses, and sanitary and wholesome misbranded or adulterated foods, enhance confidence in the food regulatory system, as well as achieve economic growth and development by promoting fair trade practices and sound regulatory foundation for domestic and international trade. So what now is the role of my research projects with the food safety? So currently, even though we have this Food Safety Act, we still are um, having or, or developing um, IRR as well as standards or the Philippine um, national standards, particularly for agriculture. One, uh, the regulatory agency is the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Fisheries and Standards, where I am one of the members of their technical working group who um, are, are responsible for the Philippine national standards for the safety of food and crafts. So um, if you're curious, for the international agencies, you have Codex Elementarius International Food Standards that govern the food safety, as well as the European Union, um, and United States Environmental Protection Agency, the Food and Drug Administration, and the Food Standard Agency. Now in the Philippines, 
We also have, of course, agencies that um, would be related to food safety. And this is Department of Agriculture, as I have mentioned earlier. So if you have like food products which are raw, the farmers or the sellers would go to the Department of Agriculture. Now, if you cook, for example, um, the rice and you have a problem, you go to the Department of Health, particularly um, the Food and Drug Administration. Other concerns of the consumers could go, of course, into the uh, Department of Interior and Local Government. And we also have, of course, DOST. So what now is the challenge um, related to food safety? So we have different microorganisms, such as this bacterium salmonella, that could affect food safety. Um, could affect different agricultural products, such as livestock, and it could cause um, salmonellosis, or, or more commonly known as typhoid fever for those who are not biologists. This could be easily passed on through cross-contamination as well as bad food handling. So, um, the challenge is that when you consume contaminated agricultural products such as fish, livestock, vegetables, there could be outbreaks due to pathogenic microorganisms. And these organisms I have classified earlier into the hierarchy or the system of classification. So a usual example would be salmonella. And the one that we are common uh, or that we that's more common to us is E. coli 0157H7. These are all um, bacteria which should cause food and waterborne diarrhea. In developed countries, around um, one-third of the population is affected, while in developing countries, according to the FAO and WHO, there are around 2.2 million people each year. And so, um, just to uh, compare with the current, we have actually non-scientific reports of these um, pathogenic microorganisms affecting the lives of people. So I just would like to have a rundown of these um, different articles, but not scientific articles, that are reported in the Philippines. All right. So the main challenge is that in developing countries, it is difficult to establish whether a disease outbreak is waterborne or foodborne, or if it involves um, direct fecal or oral transfer, and incidences go unrecorded. I, I think I would not say more <laughs> with our situation now. And it makes it difficult to estimate the trends, especially, for example, in, for instance, um, I will not go far for um, diarrheal diseases. For example, if you go to the Quezon City Health Centers like we used years ago, there are only around less than 10 cases of um, diarrheal disease which are affected by bacteria. And those affected by protozoa, if you're affected by amoebiasis, only around five cases for the whole of Quezon City. So I don't need to say more. So the usual um, detection method for this microorganism is culture-based detection, when we just get the sample from the environment, do culture method, like we have the different culture media, allow them to grow. And after around one to two weeks, we have the results. All right, so it also affects, of course, food safety would affect the health and the well-being of the individuals as well as the community. And there are economic consequences such as the healthcare systems when we know now that we do not have enough insurance system as well as economic productivity. So because of that, I would like to share with you um, one of my research studies, development of loop-mediated isothermal amplification or LAMP, lateral flow assay LFA-based kit to detect Vibrio infections in fisheries, which is funded by the Department of Agriculture Biotechnology Program Office. So one of my thesis students or my former thesis students uh, was involved in this project and part of her project is developing the part um, LAMP or the loop mediated isothermal amplification. I just would like to of course give credit to her as um, her paper uh, would be published soon. Um, she's now currently an MD-PhD student. All right, so why the particular focus in Laguna Lake? Because it is the largest lake in the Philippines. It is one of the main sources of fishery products and economic activities. It also suffers from the polluted Pollutive effects of industrialization. And as you can see, um, this would be the map of Laguna Lake as shown in the part of Luzon. I'm not an expert in geography, but anyway, here is the map showing the large area of Laguna Lake. All right, so what then is Vibrio parahemolyticus? It is also a type of bacterium, which is a gram negative. I won't discuss more as this is part of a lecture. It is halophilic, meaning it thrives in more um, salty environment and a rod-shaped bacterium, which is a leading cause of seafood-borne bacterial gastroenteritis. And one major virulence factor that we are detecting is the TDH gene or the thermostable direct hemolysin gene, wherein if this 
particular gene is present in um, the fish, um, therefore, um, Vibrio is present. All right, so the current method of detection is usually a conventional method of detection, which is, um, I mentioned earlier, the culture isolation with subsequent biochemical identification. But as I have also mentioned earlier, that we can get the results after around one to two weeks, so it is labor intensive as well as time consuming. All right, so briefly, actually, I have a video earlier, but I changed my mind because I have an unstable internet connection. You can always Google the uh, um, video of the lamp assay just to be, uh, just to clearly understood the mechanism. But anyway, just to share with you briefly, this is a figure of lamp. It is an autocycling strand displacement DNA synthesis using BST DNA polymerase. And this polymerase displaces the DNA strand in the non-denatured non form while synthesizing a new strand, eliminating the need for cycles unlike polymerase chain reaction or PCR. It uses four to six primers, yun yung mga letters that you see from the figure, which recognizes six to eight sequences in the target gene. So all those letters are just denotations, but those are the primers as well as the genes that you would like to detect. So the final products are stem loop, this one, like the hairpin loop, DNAs with several inverted repeats of the target. So positive reactions can easily be seen or can be viewed using colorimetric or fluorescent dyes. So easy, e this is easy to detect because there are no post-processing steps and like polymerase chain reaction as well as the culture method, of course. You can get results around um, less than three or two to three hours. All right, so Comparing that, of course, with the one that we would like to develop, which is lateral flow assay, we are open for collaborations to this. We already have the funding, but we are still, of course, open to collaborations. The LAMP, on the other hand, is an assay that target the TDH gene that I have mentioned earlier. And it is, of course, 100% um, inclusive as well as um, sensitive and specific. So the primer sets of course are used to detect this, uh, the gene that I have mentioned. And of course, um, this LFA, as you can see from the figure, would have different antibodies that could be attaching, of course, to our sample from the fish, for example, or from the environmental sample. And simply, if we just would like to understand this, this is just like a deep stick. If you have used um, the pregnancy test kit before, I believe I am the first female speaker from the group. But anyway, um, if you have used the pregnancy test kit before, if you're familiar with that, it has a positive, two positive lines, and then one control line with for for the negative test result. It's just similar with that one. So we have here the two test lines. If this will fluoresce or this will have light or this will color, meaning that the fish sample is also positive for Vibrio. But for this one, if only the control line will have um, the color or will fluoresce, then therefore um, there's no Vibrio in the sample. Right? So just to see clearly what have uh, been developed so far for the lamp assay, uh, we have these small tubes or the microfluid tubes where you put everything that I have mentioned earlier, the primers, the reagents, etc. So after putting those, you can actually visually inspect. This depends on the reagent. It's very easy. You could visually inspect that, but just to, of course, um, be able to publish and to provide the truth um, information or the color. So you, we can observe this under um, UV fluorescent light. Um, we can see that here, which is Vibrio for this, this two parts, as well as also these two parts would have, uh, this, this one would have fluorescence. You could also verify it and run it in gel, like, but this is not needed anymore. The gel electrophoresis part is not needed anymore. But just to prove that there is a smear or there is a band after um, the lamp assay, so this, this would be um, saying positive for Vibrio, right? And so, um, Aside from um, the LAMP LFA, which is a small bio and biotech technique, I just would like also to share with you um, other opportunities and applicability of molecular biology techniques as to fulfill the uh, parts of my title, which is opportunities and um, applicability. You can also use, of course, polymerase chain reaction, just, just simply DNA extraction. You run in the thermal cycler, then you can have your results, or you can do, of course, 
sequencing. So it's very easy when the technician can do this, but of course, there's a post-processing um, gel electrophoresis step, which would usually take more than four hours, as opposed to the lab, which would just be around two to three hours, or maximum three hours. So another, um, of course, um, method, which we are very familiar now because of this virus, uh, it's the quantitative real-time PCR or QRT-PCR. We have compared our research study of LAMP with, of course, the gold standard also real-time PCR. It is an enabled quantitative approach. Prior enrichment step is prohibited. Labor-intensive sample preparation is needed and limit of quantification. Of course, this is very sensitive and specific also like the LAMP. LFA. However, as we know now that the thermal cycler is very, very expensive and we cannot um, apply this in agricultural farms or we cannot transfer this to farmers. All right. You can also do, of course, next generation sequencing. There are also um, different um, sequencing technologies and this could determine the different um, um, of course, sequences or large DNA molecules. It is um, ultra high throughput as well as sensitive and, um, of course, um, accurate also. So, all right. And then lastly, of course, the one that I have um, discussed is a fast detection kit, which is again LAMP LFA. So, we hope to develop, of course, after um, doing LFA, we hope to develop similar with that of a pregnancy test kit. All right. So, what would then be the significance of our studies? Um, basically, we just have, for example, if we have agricultural products and other environmental sources, we could bring them to the lab or we could, um, of course, do them in the field. We identify the pathogens or contaminants by molecular techniques and develop products to uh, biotechnology. This can be used when, our, uh, this can be used in identifying when there is outbreak or could be simply for routine analysis. So um, just to uh, have um, or to satisfy, of course, my objective of um, application of food safety in um, molecular biology and biotechnology. So my key takeaways would involve the following messages from the World Health Organization. The first, there are many opportunities for food contamination to take place. Second, contaminated food can cause long-term health problems. Third, food contamination also affects the economy and society as a whole, as we have discussed. There are some harmful bacteria that are becoming resistant to drug treatments. Consumers must be well informed on food safety practices, especially now. And of course, not only me, but there, everybody has a role to play in keeping food safe. All right, I just would like to promote briefly our uh, research and service lab. We are closed right now, but we accept online consultations. So Biological Research and Services Laboratory is in um, Natural Sciences Research Institute in UP Diliman, and the services that we offer include molecular biology, animal handling workshops, microalgae workshop, um, molecular biology workshops also, toxicity and food safety testing, molecular diagnostics, not bread testing, as well as we um, also accept once the pandemic hopefully is over, we also accept research assistance as well as internship. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Pai. Okay, we're now opening the floor to questions from our participants. All right, uh, there's a question from JR. JR, um, go ahead. Yeah, we can hear you now, JR. Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, hello, Dr. Vital. Um, I, I was just curious about the LAMP uh, LFA uh, assay. Uh, so if I understood it correctly, uh, after you do LAMP, it is followed by running it on an LFA. Is that right? Hi, sir. JR. So, <laughs> okay. so um, LAMP and LFA are two different um, techniques. So actually, I, I just um, simplified my slide for LAMP as well as for LFA. It's a different development for 
um, the LFA. So we, we begin first with lamp when we collect our samples. We can, uh, of course, do culture first. And then after isolation, we can like add, or after DNA extraction, we can add the different reagents. And then we can um, like have, have it run through the gel electrophoresis, but we can just do fluorescence um, or, or expose it in fluorescence, UV fluorescence light, so that we can um, see if it's positive or negative. Now, um, the result of that, everything that we have done or the mechanism behind the lamp we involved with that of developing of the LFA, coupled with uh, gold or um, nanotechnology to put everything in, in a small kit. But, so like, separate, separate and very long process. So we are still now under, um, we just finished development of the lamp part. I see. So this would be two different tests for, this, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the bacteria. And um, the idea is to run, them, to, uh, to run them both. Uh, one probably to, con uh, to act as a confirmatory test, maybe. I'm not really sure. So it's, it's interconnected, sir. So all of those technology, we will relate it later. The LFA, we will relate it to LAMP. Everything we will put in that particular deep sleep. We, how to put it yet, we are, uh, we are still trying to develop that. I see. Thank you. Hopefully. Uh, thank you, Sir Joey, pwede magtanong? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, go ahead. Hello, Ma'am Pai. Uh, Hello, thank you for your, for your talk. Um, Magkapit-bahay lang tayo sa Diliman. So I was wondering kung what's the capability of your lab to test um, drugs uh, or, uh, you know, in vitro, of course, na... <laughs> Kunyari, meron kami na-produce na chemical, si Sir Ram, na parating sa amin, magsisynthesize. Based dun sa modeling namin, synthesize ni Sir Ram. What's the, what do you think the capability is of your lab to do that? Para hindi na kami mag-cross ng Pasig River, ikang, to go to you Yung, Sir, you want to, what do you want to, eh, parang collaboration talk yeah, po ito. Parang ganun, ma'am. Uh, parang um, pag na-synthesize under... namin or na-isolate namin, just to test yung mga initial lang, kunyari, like binding affinity, yes. etc. Like that. I Apo. think um, other researchers in the lab also offer those services. But right now, we are closed until further notice. But oh, of course, po, we could discuss that later. Sige, ma'am. Pag-usapan natin para ano, yes, summary natin sila ng UP Manila, of course. <laughs> uh, kasi sa kanila yung mal anong part. Pero I think it's a possible uh, yes, collaboration sir. in the office. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you. Right. Uh, there, we have a question from uh, Dr. Promintil. Actually, it's quite similar to my question. Uh, Mike, are you there? Promintilia. Yeah, naka unmute ka na. Hello, Joby. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we can hear you. For your uh, presentation. So I'm just wondering about uh, food safety, whether it's also compromised during this COVID-19 crisis. Are there any insights you can share to us? Hi, Sir Mike. Sir Mike and Sir Joey are my seniors in ASEAN, s and Fellowship. So for, um, that's a very controversial question. But anyway, I think um, um, the college, uh, the Department of Food tech in UP also answered that the food safety should not be compromised um, during this pandemic as we can eat our food freely as long as, of course, safely handled yung food natin. As we can see, very different um, cross-contamination in terms of food handling. But even um, that, if the food is cooked well, we... we iwasan po muna natin yung mga raw foods. But if it is cooked well, then we can enjoy our food. Is it okay? I satisfied ka, Sir Mike? <laughs> okay. So. All right. Okay. Let uh, me thank you, si Sir Mike. Um, we still have time for one more question.
Okay, if uh, there are no more questions, we would like to thank our fourth uh, speaker for thank gracing us this morning. Thank you, Dr. Pai. Let's